Yo, yo, this is King Stevion with the Christian Cartel PR. Today we are here to talk about, uh, you know, of course, the Democratic uh, debate. Uh, really, we're talking about Hillary Clinton. We're talking about a little bit about what T.I. said about uh, when they asked him would he uh, pretty much vote for Hillary Clinton, a woman president. And, you know, he, he pretty much was like, really, really, you asking me that? And I'm paraphrasing. But, you know, and, and a lot of men know this, why they wouldn't vote for a woman president, because they know God's word. A lot of these guys who claim to be thugs or, you know, portray as they this thug or this hood person, a lot of them won't even acknowledge God. So instead of Clifford Harris, T.I., saying, hey, I'm a godly man, too. I may be thugging it up, but I believe in God. Yo, God said a woman shouldn't have dominion over, uh, I have authority over a man. You know, instead of him just saying that, he just, you know, beat around the bush with it. But I'm here today to tell you what God's word says about it. Now, the, that's a real big punchline, which I want to say this first. But I'm going to wait till the end of this, you know, this, this uh, show right here uh, in devotion before I give you that big punchline. But the first scripture, if you go over to 1 Timothy 2, 12, okay, that's chapter 2, verse 12. It says, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to assert authority over the man but to be in silence. Now, when the apostle was talking in his scripture, of course he was talking to the church, but he still was talking about authority and teaching of a woman um, over a man. Um, so it tells you right there, there's some authority in teaching. I know a lot of you like, oh, well, that, that's women teachers. But when did that happen? You know, we gotta go back to the days uh, of the Bible because a lot of you might say, oh, that's, that's a book over 2,000 years old. It's, it, listen here, it, it's older than 2,000 years. Do your math and you'll figure it out. <laughs> but if you go back then, were there women teachers? Were there women teaching anything? Was women teaching women? You know, well, were women just only teaching kids? But it says men, you know, over men. So... I just wanted to point that out because it talks about the authority and, and to let you know that there's some authority in teaching. Now, we're going to go right on to the next one here, which is Genesis 1, verse 26 through 28. And it reads like this. And God said, let us make man in our image. Now, I'm going to pause right there. I got a comma right there, so I'm going to slow down right there. He said, let us. So that lets you know right then and there that there were two men. Two men. So how can we make a man in our image if there's one is a boy and one is a man or there's one man and one woman? That lets you know there was no woman sitting right there when he said let us make man in our image. Because if, he, if it was a woman and a man sitting there, then you... That man would have been made with two private areas. And he would probably have one breast and one chest. You know what I'm saying? Which that looks ridiculous anyway. But let <laughs> you know that was the Christ up there. You got a lot of people say, oh, Christ is God. God is Christ. Listen, God is us as long as we allow God to dwell in us and we do the things of God. We're one with him like Christ said. I'm one with the Father. He ain't say, I am the Father. I'm one with the Father. So that lets you know. And then he said, doing that, they are one. Okay, I can go on and on and on about that. But that's a whole nother different area I can speak on. Um, but I'm going to go on and read. After our likeness. And let them have dominion now see right there he says and my, and my, and my cord kind of messing up here and it says and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air now when I saw that I said oh my gosh that is some power he gave us power from the beginning over the fowl of the air Whew. let's go on I'm going to let that dwell into you for a second it says, and over the cattle, and over the earth, 
and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And then it went on to say, so God created man in his image, in the image of God, created he, him, male and female, created he, them. So, and we know that God put Adam in a deep sleep and took and made woman from Adam's rib. So, right then and there, she was a smaller part of the bigger man. If I take out a piece of my rib, my rib is not bigger than me. I can still, I'm still over that rib because if I wanted to put that rib back in, inside my rib cage, all I gotta do is use my hands, put it back in, I'm just giving you a visual to let you know how powerful man is. I can pick that rib up and put it back in me. A rib can't pick up a man and put him over her. You see what I'm saying? And I want you to let that sink in. But man has dominion. Okay, and he just named everything that the man should have dominion over. So this is the thing. A woman should not run this country. Hillary Clinton, no. You gotta think about it. If she's the president, that means her husband is what? First man? Uh-uh. First lady means it was the first lady created for that man. See what I'm saying? Woman wasn't made first. Man was made first. And y'all know it. Y'all know it. Y'all know it. But those who don't know, I'm explaining this to you. And I gave you the scripture. You need to go through those chapters and just read it. Here comes the punchline. Right? We're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Okay? It says, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife, as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. Now, he's giving this to the men, okay? And of course, he's talking to the women too in, in another part in that scripture right there, uh, further up or down, because um, I don't have that verse right there. But, if the husband respects his wife. Now you notice the husbands, he hit the husbands first because we're the heads. It starts with us in order for the women to really know how to give respect. If a woman don't have a, 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 a teacher to teach her, then how can she learn how to treat her husband? She don't learn it on her own. She ain't gonna just learn it from another woman because it in the beginning. Who taught uh, Eve? Of course God gave man that wisdom and he shared that wisdom with the woman. And of course it was confirmed once it, it, it sunk in her spirit that it was true, okay? But Satan came along, you know how that happened and this is how the world is in the situation is in today. But the point I'm making here is this. Even with Aquila and Priscilla, if y'all know that scripture, the woman wasn't around teaching alone. I always heard people say, oh, she taught, she taught, she taught. No, 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 no. They taught together. But if you notice in the scripture here, it talks about uh, being heirs together. And of course, he's talking about everybody, but the husband and wives too. Okay, we share in what God gave us together. There, the woman is the helpmate, help me to help the man. Help him do what? Help him carry out the duties that God said. That's why she's called the first lady. She's made for that man's real. But a woman should not run the country because it's God's order. Now, the punchline this is, and this is what it is, you know, once we go out of God's ruling, his order, things are chaos. You got women in the church today who are claiming to be bishops. The word of God says clearly that a bishop should have one wife. Now, how did the woman wind up having a wife? See, and a lot of women use that to say, he said a bishop should have one wife. So I went and got me a wife. And now you got two women sitting up there married. But the word of God says that a woman should not do what a man does and a man should not do what a woman does. That kills that right there. 
So if a man is a bishop, a woman cannot be a bishop. That's overseen. And her husband is sitting there being a deacon. She just put authority over her husband by her becoming a bishop. And people need to realize this. Tell my they an apostle, but the husband is the bishop. You are out of order. You know it is. You know there's orders to the, the leaders in God's fivefold ministry. And of course, the bishops is of the church. That's not part of the fivefold ministry, but still in ministry. So the point I'm making is that we stick to God's word in the order he gave us, like with the heads. God's the head of Christ, Christ is the head of man, man is the head of woman. It don't go from God to Christ to Christ to man, from man to man, from man to man, and then woman to woman to woman to woman, a woman to man to woman to man. It don't go like that. But the first part, let's go back. God to man, God to Christ, Christ to man is correct. But when it goes all backwards and discombobulated, that's not how it goes. You got to stick to God's word and you shall live. Okay? And when I say live, live spiritually. The way the, way the world is today, gays marrying gays, people killing, all this stuff is going on is because they got out of God's order. Let's get back to God's order, folks, and we will be successful in this world, in the spirit, and we will recognize that we're part of one body. And like it says, we will be heirs together. Okay, I'm King Stev Yarn. Download the song plan in the background. It is for free. Support this show. Forward this to all your friends on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever you are, and get the word out. Put some inspiration and motivation in people. Yes, Lord. Okay? God we bless. Day, I'm out. Give you thanks. Because it's you who woke us up this morning, Father God. It's you who kept us alive and our children alive. So we're here today to let them know why we're so thankful for you. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. By the grace of God, I am here this day. So I thank you, Lord. Every way, whether flowers bloom or problems burst, always remember to put the Lord first. I thank you, Lord, for being so kind, as it was you that cleared my mind. With the heart and soul you have given me, I give you my love as it's meant to be. Serving you, Lord, is never a chore. As my heart desires to serve you more. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. You have cleansed my soul and made it strong and forgiven me for what I did wrong. The Lord is so precious in my heart. I should never leave you or ever to part. I know this now in the days I repent because you brought me back home with no resent. I still cherish the words the Lord has spoken and seek and find as my heart was broken. But you lifted me up through your spirit within. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thanks to right now, Father. Thank you. There are a lot of thanks that I want to give you, Father. 
Father God, I first like to thank you, Father God, for waking me up this morning, Father. You didn't have to, but you did, Father. So I thank you, Father. Thank you for allowing me to see another day, Father. Father God, I thank you for allowing me to see my kids, Father. I thank you, Father God, for putting food in my stomach, Father. And giving me knowledge and wisdom, Father God, of your word, Father. Father, I thank you, Father God, for the wisdom you gave me, Father God, to go out and win these souls, Father. So we can raise up these leaders, Father. And we can teach them, Father God. Don't follow the ways of man, but follow the ways of you, Father. So I thank you for it. I thank you for your commandments, Father. I thank you for your son, Father God, who was crucified, Father God. I thank you, Father, for this ministry, Father God. Everything you have done, everything you're doing right now, and everything that you're about to do, Father. I'm thankful for it, Father. Father God, that's thanking you right now, Father God. And it's not only me who's thanking you, but it's them too. And the ones that listen to this song, Father God, that's throw their hands in the air, Father God. And thank you. Like I said, Father, you ain't out to do it, but you did. You gave me another day, Father God, to give you praise and worship, Father God. As I worship you in spirit, Father God, and in truth. This is the true Father. We thank you, Lord.